This morning we're going to talk about inverse functions or reflections on the line y equals x. And you can see I have a, a handout here that will be available to you if you want to go download it and practice on your own. I'll fill it in for you here and then I would suggest you go and, and download it from my PBWiki site, which I will give the link to at the end of the, in the comment section. Okay? So what is an inverse function? An inverse function is simply a reflection on the line y equals x. And it's so easy to find an inverse when you've been given a series of points because all you have to do is switch the x and y variables. So here I have minus 2, 3. So now this is going to be 3 and minus 2. This one is 0 and 4. So I switch them. y becomes x, x becomes y. And I think you can probably figure out if I'm switching all the variables, I'm also going to be switching the domain and range. So 2, 5 becomes 5, 2. 4, 3, 3, 4 becomes 4, 3. 5, 2 becomes 2, 5. And 6, 1 becomes 1, 6. Very simple. Everyone can do that. And sometimes a teacher will even ask you that on a test. Now to sketch the inverse function, just like it says here, the points, we've switched them around. X becomes Y, Y becomes X. So here what we have is the original function, F, plotted on this graph here, graph A. Here's my points. And the question asks you to plot the inverse. And note there's this little symbol, F to the negative 1 f minus 1. That means inverse. Okay, so that's, that's just telling you you've taken the inverse of some function. So if I want the inverse of this function, the first thing I need to know is what are the coordinates of these points? And it just so happens that these coordinates match the same points we had up here. So you don't have to find them yourself. They're already there. So I'm going to graph this inverse function here over on this graph and see what we get. So we have 3 and minus 2. We have 4 and 0. We have 5 and 2. Oh, that's the same one here. And we have 4 and 3. 4 and 3. 1, 2, 3. 4 and 3. And we have 2 and 5. That's this one right here. And we have 1 and 6. So if you graph these, you can see that we have, just a minute here now, we had 3 and minus 2. Let's make that a little darker so you can see it. These points are actually a reflection about this line that goes right through here, y equals x. And if you look at the points, I should have probably done them in a different color and then you'd see them better. If you look at these points that we plotted, they are the same distance away from these ones. So if I were to draw a perpendicular line from this point to the line y equals x, its inverse point would be right across from it. So it's reflected like a mirror, right? So this one went, this one went to here, this one went to here, this one went to here, and this one went to this one here. So what you have to be careful with is when you do an inverse, you have to determine whether or not the inverse is a function. And if you remember our lesson on what is a function and look back up here, you can see that this number four has two coordinates. It has 4 and 0, which is this one. So that one went to this point here, right? So this one is 4 and 0, and there's another point, 4 and 3, which would mean that this does not pass a vertical line test. So because it has the same x value but different y values, it means the inverse would not be a function and that's important for you to determine. <clears throat> Note the graph of the inverse function is the reflection 
of the original function in the line y equals x. And there we go. So you can just see again how these all just switch places. Is the original relation a function? Well, we go back here and have a look at the coordinates. So each x value only has one y value. And if you look here, it would all pass the vertical line test. I don't have any dots that have another dot underneath them. But here I do. So the original function is the original function is a is a function or sorry the original relation <clears throat> is a function is a function but the inverse is not and when it says explain your answer your explanation would say because when I switch the points the coordinates 4, 0, and 4, 2 were in the inverse, and because they are right above each other, they are not. It makes it not a function. You can't have two y values for the same x. Each boy, bo girl can only have one boyfriend, right? One x, one y. Example, for f at x equals 4x minus 8, determine, this means determine the inverse. The inverse is not a reciprocal function. Some people get that mixed up when we get into reciprocals. Inverse means switch x and y. Then determine f at 2 and the inverse at 0. So when you're going to determine an inverse, you want to switch the variables. So because this is written in function notation, ideally you want to replace. So I'm going to say let f at x be equal to y because I want to switch the variables and I don't want to have f and x in my in my variable as a variable okay so I'm going to switch so I write y equals 4x minus 8 now to determine the inverse and I'm going to write this and if you're really good with your math, math communication skills you will write what you're doing so for inverse switch variables so I'm going to switch the variables over here and I'm going to make y x and I'm going to make x y <coughs> and now my task <coughs> sorry <coughs> my task is to switch to solve for the y so I'm going to have to bring this minus 8 over here x plus 8 is equal to 4 y's and I want 1 y because I want this to be my inverse. So I divide by 4 on both sides and I get y. So I'm going to write it the other way now. I'm going to just put this over here and this over here. Quite acceptable math. If 2 plus 2 equals 4 then 4 is equal to 2 plus 2, right? So I'm going to say y equals x plus 8 over 4, or I can write it as x over 4 plus 2. <clears throat> so now that I've determined the inverse, so I'm going to say the inverse, f minus 1, is equal to x over 4 plus 2. But it wants me to determine what was f at 2. So f at 2 means where I see an x in this equation, I plug in 2. So, kind of running out of room here. It's not a great worksheet, is it? So I would say f at 2 is equal to 4 times 2 minus 8. And 8 minus 8 is 0, of course. And for the inverse, that's this one here, I'm going to plug in 0, f at 0, the inverse at 0. So I'm going to do f minus 1 at 0 is equal to 0 divided by 4 plus 2, which is 2. So if you look at my coordinates here, f at 2, so this gave me the coordinates 2 and 0 on the function, and this function, when or the inverse function, the coordinates would be 0 and 2, which proves that I have found the inverse because the inverse is showing me that I've switched the x's and y's. So it's a, a way to check if 
your inverse is actually, you've done the right work. Okay, so this one here, I'm going to write it on another piece of paper because I've used up too much room here. <clears throat> so I have 2x plus 3y is equal to 6. It asks me to determine g of x and the inverse. So right now it says the equation for g is this, so I need to rearrange this equation as always, just like if I said write this as y equals something. Well, I can't write it as y equals something because I have something in front of the, the y right now and I have a 2x on this side. So I have to rearrange the equation initially and then I will call it g at x. So the first thing I want to do again is isolate this part here. So that means that 3y is equal to 6 minus 2x. It's a little bit of algebra here, but you can do it. <clears throat> and then finally, this has three y's. And as in, if you want the equation itself, as in terms of y, I have to divide everything by 3. So that's 6 over 3 minus 2 over 3x. And 6 divided by 3 is just 2. 2 minus 2 thirds x. So that's my y, but they're telling me that this function is going to be called g of x. So here's my g of x equals 2 minus 2 thirds x. That's g of x. What is the inverse of this function? So again, what I have to do is I need to replace x's and y's here and then solve for the other variable. So I'm going to start up here with this one, and I'm going to switch the variables. So 3x is equal to 6 minus 2y. So switch variables for inverse, okay, always. For inverse, switch variables. So now that I've switched the variables, I just have to solve for y. Now, because the y is negative here, I'm going to take this part of the equation and bring it over this way, and I'm going to bring this one over this way, okay? <clears throat> so that's going to give me 2y is equal to 6 minus 3x, but I don't want two y's, I want one y. So I'm going to divide every term by 2. So now I have y is equal to 3 minus 3 halves x. Okay, so that's going to be my inverse function. g negative 1x equals 3 minus 3 halves x. Now you could go and figure out some values that will prove that you've done the right work. So if I put in 0 here, the inverse at 0 would be 3 minus 3 halves times 0. And of course, this is all 0, so that gives me 3. So that would give me the coordinates 0, 3. So if this is the inverse of this equation, then when I plug in 3, I switch the variables again, so I'm, the inverse would be 3, 0. If I plug 3 into this equation here, I should get 0 for an answer. So let's try that. So g at 3 is going to be 2 minus 2 thirds times 3. So remember, when you're doing function notation, you just plug in the variable or the value for the variable. I always put them in brackets. It's safe, especially if you have a negative. You don't want to make a mistake with negatives. They're the worst things in math, right? Okay, so if I multiply this by 3, you can see this would just cancel the 3s. Or if you did it the long way, you'd say minus 6 divided by 3 is minus 2. I would get 2 minus 2, and that gives me 0. So this gives me the coordinates 3, 0, which was the opposite of this one, 0, 3. And that's what an inverse function is. It's not very hard. Now, if you're following along, I highly suggest that you go to the website that I will put the link to so that you can print out this 
um, worksheet, this worksheet here, because we're going to be using that in the next couple of lessons on transformations. Very critical part to your grade 11 math. Have a good day.